If you don't have a pool at your Airbnb or you're just looking to spoil yourself a little bit one day, I would definitely recommend going to the Sayulinda Hotel and getting a day pass for their pool. It's $30 US and $20 of that actually goes towards a bar tab at the rooftop bar. So you can stay there all day if you want to and it's open from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. You can sit anywhere you like. So there's these hanging chairs by the pool. There's the whole bar area. And then there are also day beds that you can see behind me. If like me, you don't actually drink, you can get a bunch of delicious virgin cocktails as well. And they don't serve food so they do allow you to bring up your own food. We just went to a taco place around the corner and got those. I think the one caution I would have about this place is that you can see, obviously, it's on this beautiful rooftop, but the elevator was broken while we were there, so you had to walk up and down these kind of crazy stairs, and it just isn't very accessible. <laughs> Everyone that we spoke to about surfing in Sayulita told us that we needed to go check out La Lancha, and this beach was beautiful. It is a white sand beach, and it always seemed to have slightly better wave conditions than what we were getting in town in Sayulita, so I would recommend checking it out, but it is a little bit of a trek from Sayulita that also involves a swamp walk that I'll show you in a minute. We took the shuttle with Wild Mex, which was $20 US per Per person, but I would highly recommend renting a car if you want to surf at other beaches. So this is the walk to La Lancha, and it looks fine right now. You do just have to go through like the jungle a little bit, but uh, there is a swamp that we will be walking through shortly. And yeah, I'll show you that. It gets a little bit intense. It's also really fun uh, with a surfboard doing all of this stuff, but worth it to get to the beach at the other end Whoop. last time we just crossed that this time we are trying to walk perhaps an easier way but i did just slip so you for sure want to have water shoes and preferably ones that are little booties oh stuck on a tree last time these were like under the water and floating and this was like extraordinarily hard but this time it's much much easier thank goodness and this is what you get out the other side and there's some waves and there's no one surfing so it's gonna be perfect Sayulita Beach is great fun, but if you're looking to get away from the party vibe, this is Playa de los Martes, and it's about a 15-minute walk or a short golf cart ride away from downtown Sayulita. We actually rented these chairs for 300 pesos for the entire day, and there are still people who come and serve you drinks if that's what you're into. We had a lot of fun playing in the water here. There were waves that were pretty big that seemed to come out of nowhere and were breaking on shore. So we played around in the ocean and it was a really good time. But of course, you can also just chill and relax on this beautiful beach. Just past Playa de los Muertes, there's this little beach area. You just have to climb over some rocks and it's very pretty. There's like only a couple of people here and that is like the regular beach where there's lots of people and restaurants and stuff. Um, and that is Sayulita like main beach over there. And we're staying like way over there. minute drive away from Sayulita is the town of San Pacho, which is also called San Francisco as well. And this place is definitely worth a visit. It's another cute surf town. 
We took the local bus to get there because if you don't have a car, that's the most affordable option. You just go right up to that counter in the bus station. You can purchase your ticket, which is only a couple of dollars, and then get on the bus while it's there. Everyone at the bus station was very friendly and helped us get on the right bus every time we were going somewhere. And you do get dropped off right here, which is just at the side of the road, kind of off of the highway. And then you can walk into town. There is just the one main road that gets you into San Pacho. So you're not going to get lost, but it is a little bit of a walk. You're not just dropped off in the center of town. We ended up heading to this organic cafe that was delicious to have our breakfast. We left pretty early, so we wanted to make sure we fueled up before heading to the main attraction of San Pacho, which of course, like most places, is the beach. And this beach did seem quieter than the beach in Sayulita, so if you're looking for something maybe a bit more relaxing, this place is definitely smaller than Sayulita is, and it's very beautiful as well. There is also surfing normally, but there weren't any waves the day that we visited, unfortunately. <laughs> There are lots of places in Sayulita that you can take yoga classes, but the Rose Room at the Don Benito Hotel offers something that I've never done at home, which is rooftop sunset yoga. It was beautiful. We headed up to the rooftop of the hotel just before sunset and paid 225 pesos to take the hour and a half long restore and expand class. They also have mats for rent, so you don't need to bring your own on vacation, which is great. Our class had about eight people in it, and it was really cool to see the sunset from the rooftop. This was a really easy one for me because when I was here, sunrise was between 7.45 and 8, but going for a sunrise swim is one of the most beautiful ways to start your day in Sailita. The lighting is perfect and it's just so beautiful and peaceful on the beach. Even just going for a walk is nice and then after you can get yourself a nice little coffee. If you've been here before or if you're subscribed to my channel, then you know that I love fashion and I love shopping. So no surprise that one of the activities we did while we were here was actually going into Puerto Vallarta and going shopping for the day. I made a whole video on this, so if you want more details about what I got or where we went, then you can go check that out. I'll leave a link below. But basically, we went into a bunch of different stores, and some of them were fast fashion retailers that we have in Canada, and lots of them were actually completely new to me, so it was fun. I got to see what's available here compared to what I'm able to buy at home, and of course, ended up making some purchases as well. Unless you're a total pro, I would highly suggest taking at least one surf lesson while you're here. We actually went on a surf trip with Surfin Sayulita, who actually created this video for us, which was amazing. Thank you, David, for that. Our surf trip was about $100 Canadian per person, and they took us to this beautiful beach with some really nice, friendly waves. If you're a beginner, surfing here is awesome. The water is warm. There's lots of other beginners around, and the waves were great for someone who doesn't know exactly what they're doing. But if you're intermediate or advanced, lessons are also a great opportunity to chat with someone who lives and breathes surfing about all the different beaches here, where you should go, what the conditions are going to be like. So either way, I think it's a good idea. At the end of our trip, we decided to rent a golf cart and it was really fun just driving around, being able to get places quickly, being able to take our surfboards with us. It was a bit of a splurge. It was 10,400 pesos for 14 days, but even just renting one for a day or two, I think would be great. Mm -hmm. 